from the Good evening and welcome to KILI Storytelling Hour. My name is Brian, Sergeant Cloud, and uh, I'm up here on Wednesdays and bring you story, uh, the Lakota language, and uh, latest happenings in uh, our school education. So this evening I'm up here again with AJ, so he'll introduce himself and then we'll uh, take off. Good evening, uh, AJ Agrinelli, 8th grade teacher down at Wounded District School. Thanks for having me again there, Brian. Yeah, it's good to... Uh, uh, I get encouragement when you come along. <laughs> I, I feel stronger. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I have a... Uh, well, this afternoon... Uh, I oh, was sitting there th- uh, looking for a story. I have a, a folder. Uh, I've been doing this for a while now, so I keep like uh, stories. And I went through some, and uh, this evening I will not do a Iktomi story because uh, it's already uh, raining out there, so I better not do one because I think it's still daylight out there. Worse. So. <laughs> we don't want to I don't make it, I don't want to make it worse. <laughs> But anyway, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow we don't have to uh, worry about work. Yeah, no school no tomorrow. School, Friday. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Lloyd said it. Oh, I want to thank Lloyd for uh, being here and uh, opening the door to Kitty Radio and uh, for uh, storytelling hour, and also Kitty Radio. And, uh, you are listening to ninety point one. Uh, up here at uh, Porcupine Butte, 88.7 down in Rapid City, and uh, KILIRadio.org on the internet. So uh, I want to say, uh, uh, before we go on, I would like to uh, say good evening to uh, Tom over in Pine Ridge. Uh, he always listens to uh, storytelling over. That's uh, Sean's uh, grandpa. Okay. And then... Uh, up in uh, Martintown, uh, Charlie, if you're listening, have a good evening. And all you people that are on the road uh, going home, uh, be careful and drive slow and it's, gonna, it's windy out there and maybe it's even raining right now some places. And, uh, have a good evening. Uh, this evening, AJ is up here, so I'm going to ask him a couple questions. Uh, he, I might surprise him because I didn't tell him what, uh, what, uh, uh, <coughs> what, uh, what I was going to ask him. Uh, he's an eighth grade teacher. And, uh, <coughs> one time uh, uh, <coughs> I, I, uh, there's a story uh, where it was told by a, a a person, a former president, and, uh, he said that uh, <coughs> it's just like our medicine. I think this story is a, a, a something about the medicine, really. You know, but uh, the road that you take in uh, life, uh, like uh, you don't know what you're going to uh, end up doing, and uh, sometimes, like we. When you're young, uh, you're going to say, well, I'm going to be a uh, teacher or I'm going to be a uh, scientist or a rodeo uh, drunk rider or something. But uh, sometimes you're going to uh, find out that uh, in in that short, in that life, in the beginning, uh, you're going to find a surprise, and that surprise will be uh, challenging, and and then and then it might change again. So in life, we we don't we never know what we're going to end up doing, or be doing in the beginning, or in the middle of a, at that circle. I feel like when I was growing up, I never. Uh, well, back then, uh, education was very uh, hard to get. 
it was uh, school was uh, if you get beyond high school it's, it was expensive not too many people have college education uh, during my time I'm not going to tell you how old I am <laughs> <laughs> but I've been here for a long time but uh, <clears throat> today anybody everybody can get that education and but in those days, uh, since it was expensive, uh, like uh, I didn't know what I was going to uh, do. And, uh, what I, uh, I think someone did a pretty good job and uh, uh, put me on that right road. And I stayed with uh, school. And then when I finished high school, uh, I got a... Uh, we call it BIA grant. And, uh, it was. Uh, I don't know why I did that, but I picked. Uh, it was called Black Hills Teachers College then, over in Spearfish. Now it's called. Uh, Black, uh, it has Black a different. State. Yeah, Black, Black Hills State. State. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, yeah, it's, a, it's a good place. But uh, and then I didn't know uh, like. Like my mother was the one that really took care of my, my road then, and, uh, and since she never went to beyond high school, uh, nobody told me about. Okay, uh, you're gonna take uh, this many hours, and uh, you better do this first before you get into your major or minor, or whatever. So when I went over there, uh, I went into childhood education right away. And I, I don't know why I did that. And right away I had music. I got an F right there, right away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know nothing about do, re, mi, fa, so. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, sometimes we like uh, we end we end up doing something that's surprising and at the same time challenging. And now here you are here. I don't know how old, how old you are. You're young. You're very young. <laughs> and, uh, getting there. Uh, <laughs> you're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're a teacher now. Yeah. So, uh, uh, can you share how how you became a teacher and if, if that's what you wanted to do? Uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely not the direct road to being a teacher mm -hmm. to be honest I never thought I'd be a teacher really even if you asked me just a few years ago I didn't think I'd be a teacher I, uh, through school I kind of coasted through mm -hmm. never made any teacher real happy <laughs> showed up for the test um, never took it as seriously as I should have and it kind of hurt me it hurt where I went to college, um, it the less serious you take it, the more doors it closes. Um, wasn't always on the best road. Sometimes it was actually a pretty bad road. And after college, I went and I worked on a farm, drove a tractor for a while. Thought, oh, this is great. This is all I got to do. And then I traveled around the country, and then lived in some questionable places and mm -hmm. really up to up to not too much good for a while and some kind of struck me that said there's probably other kids like me that were never really driven to take over the world or but but that's a possibility really anything that you mm -hmm. want to do you can accomplish Mm -hmm. And I didn't really realize that until I decided one day to move out of my the place I was living, get in a truck, and drive around the country for about a year. It was the first time I had been on this side of the Mississippi River. And mm -hmm. I just saw everything, everything I could see and went everywhere I wanted to go. And I was just, I felt free, really, for the first time in my life, just totally free. I could go anywhere. But with that, it kind of kind of limited my options too. Mm -hmm. I was also I was 
living out of a truck and not can't just find any job you want living out of a truck and so I decided I was able to find Teach for America and they've helped me become a teacher and they give me great support to my goal in class is really just to show every one of my students that you can do anything you want to do um, so I've been out of college for, for a little while now almost 10 years and it's yeah, my my driving force coming to school every day is is every one of those kids can do anything they want to. A little hard work and probably a couple of sacrifices along the way. Mm -hmm. They really can. They can be any job, anything they want, go anywhere they want. It's up to them. Yeah. So it's uh it's been an interesting road, but I was just talking to a friend on the way up here and telling her I couldn't be, be happier. Sure, we do have our difficult days yeah. at school. Yeah. Brian knows not every yeah. day is easy. Yeah. But some days are so great, and every one of those kids deserves deserves a, a great chance to, to do anything they want. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's, uh, well, are you glad you became a teacher? I am glad. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be happier. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, I don't know that that I ever really grew up. I feel like I'm 13 too, and love to play around and have fun and enjoy ourselves. But we got to learn at the same time. So it's it's really great to to interact with the students and and just to to do your best to keep a smile on. Yeah. And I, to be honest, I love being a teacher. Sure, yeah. there's a lot. There is a lot of hard work and mm -hmm. a lot of things outside yeah. of school mm -hmm. that people don't see, and the preparation to make sure that every day they're learning as much as possible. But it's great. It's great being a teacher, and it's great living here. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been to. Yeah, it's um, you know every day. Uh, I mean, like, maybe, like, I feel that maybe uh, what we're doing is not really, I don't see it, but then uh, when these, uh, they are absorbing, yeah, they are, uh, even though they, you think they're not paying attention or they're not really doing what you want them to do, but, you know, it's it's working, you can, uh, yeah. Like, uh, and it's, and then also the school they're doing everything they can to bring in all the uh, as many new, resources as I mean, we've got a whole lot of new resources a lot of resources school. yeah there's a lot of first year teachers at yeah. school yeah. so everyone's just working hard to become yeah. the best teacher yeah. they can and it's nice to know well it's tough to know that you can't quit on any one of them no um, mm -hmm. if you don't do it if you're if you're not there to teach them each day they're not going to learn. Yeah. you got to be 100% yeah. ready to teach. Yeah. And the other thing is, well, uh, well we're, we're on this, um, it also takes the parents, too, yeah. and especially the, par uh, the parents and also the other people in that community. It takes an like, entire community like to educate one the, Yeah, we're in Wendani, or, or Wendani District School, but... The, Manderson, and then we got one that need down here, and then we have people along the uh, one that need Creek towards Rocky Fort, mm -hmm. and there's some other ones that come to one that need to. All the schools are like that. It yeah. takes you cannot, the, uh, you know, uh, coming up here to the radio station. Uh, I hear that little phrase: "You cannot do it alone," and uh, that's like when you do the Lakota language too. It's, it's uh, we are always hear that. You cannot, you cannot revitalize that Lakota language alone. It takes a lot of people, a lot of, uh, and a lot of, uh, like on Wednesdays, I remember last week, I, there's two words, persevere and uh, commitment. If you don't commit yourself to what you're doing, and if you don't persevere, then uh, it's going to be weak. It's, uh, and if you do that other way, be committed, be there all the time, then 
and then you're going to see some uh, see results. They'll be there. Yeah, yeah, <coughs> yep. Doesn't feel it hour to hour always, yeah, but yeah. when you look at it, <coughs> the ways you come over over time, mm-hmm. how far you come each month or yeah. just to see the difference in even my students from September to now. Yeah, yeah. I know that they've learned yeah, so much yeah. and it's great to see and that's that's what really makes you happy to be a teacher. The other thing that uh, that I tell my wife is that uh, you know these children uh, I've been here four years now it seems like, like they're a part of uh, I'm sure they feel like that too. We know each other uh, we know we meet somewhere. We say hello, and uh, w- uh, you look forward to seeing them. Sometimes you have a good day. Sometimes you have a rough day. But in the end, we always like uh, when you when you leave, you wave at them and say, "Have a good day. And be careful. And see you again Monday. And things like that." Yeah, so you care you know, about every yeah, one of them. Yeah, you care about them. So. If you're listening out there, uh, uh, like uh, Vance, sometimes he says he li- listens to this Kili radio, or anybody from the school, if you're listening, uh, people care about you. People love you, uh, the teachers, uh, the parents, uh, the community people. Uh, they care for you, and they love you, and they want you to walk that road. Yeah. That one where, And when you walk that road, Good things will happen. And you're you're going to see good things. There's always bumps in the road. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, always. You can get there's, there. there's there's like like when you when you do that story when you read it we'll talk about that. There's part in there about the uh, medicine wheel. Remember, I think I mentioned that mm-hmm. before. There's a bad road and a good road. But uh, all of us are on that good road now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. Uh, Let's before we forget. Uh, let's do the. Uh, uh, last week we came over here, and uh, tonight was supposed to be the uh, parent night. Right, it was uh, supposed to be a free meal, but no, uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's going to be next week. Yep, next Wednesday, yeah, five to seven. Yeah. So if you're on your way to uh, one of the district school, uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to have it next week. <laughs> And we're gonna have a meal at five o'clock next week on Wednesday, and uh, and all you parents—that's for the parents. So, so if you are listening, and if you're a parent or even a community member, yeah. go over there to the Wednesday the district school and uh, see what's going on over there. Uh, there's gonna be dope prizes. There's gonna be uh, every class will have uh, some kind of. Uh, yeah, d- a different booth. Different we'll be talking booth. about wellness still, yeah, so yeah, exercise yeah. and eating yeah, right. And yeah, so everyone's got yeah, a different little yeah. agenda there. And Anna does a great job, and so yeah, hopefully yeah, the meal, as yeah, usual, I'm yeah. sure will be incredible. Yep. So uh, wellness is the thing. <coughs> and in, in Lakota, that zani, I think I, I mentioned that last time, well, uh, zania, that means in good health. Bliheta, that means like you're active. And uh, Bliheta, industrious. So if you eat right and if you exercise, you're going to be active. You're going to be active uh, in, in everything. You're going to have a good life. <laughs> you go feel good, play good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's... Um, you know that what that man uh, said about life is 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 right. Like uh, you never know what you going to uh, you, you you're going to say. Here's what I'm going to be, but it could change. And then maybe you'll you'll stay in one, or you might change again. Like I changed, I don't know how many times, three or four times, what I'm doing. So and I never was into Lakota language. And uh, now I think I started this maybe uh, maybe 2000 around there like that so 
So you, you never know what you're going to be doing. No. My my area of uh, interest was uh, business administration at one time. But now I don't think I can do that. <laughs> everything. Not a cut through. I don't have the patience. No. Patience. <laughs> my eyes are bad. <laughs> my my memory is bad. <laughs> when I had good eyes, I can do that. But, uh, um, but today, you know, I like what I'm doing, and, and that's you know, I committed myself to uh, the Lakota language. Well, let's do that story, and then. Uh, Maybe I forgot something here. Uh, I think we did all the announcements about uh, with the school. Yeah, I believe that um, tomorrow's basketball game is rescheduled to a future date. Okay. So let you know on that. Okay. Yeah. And we already covered uh, what's going to happen next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And also next Friday, uh, we're going to have a, another one of those... Uh, or lock in, they call it. Yeah, did, were you, did you go last time? Um, I didn't go. No. I was just there for the very beginning, but yeah. I didn't stay overnight okay. with them. They they lock in from right after school, one thirty until breakfast the next morning. They got fun games and movies yeah. and yeah. stuff. Some educational stuff too, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good good productive stuff for the kids to do on Friday night. And it's a good place for the children to be safe. Yeah. And also, they're learning. I'm glad that uh, who was there. Uh, See, last week Mackenzie uh, was there, right? Yeah, Mackenzie was there. There was uh, from Gear Up. The staff from yeah, Gear Up was yeah, there. Okay. And I think uh, the fourth, fourth and fifth graders are able to stay until eight, seven or eight o'clock, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, six through eighth stays stayed, overnight. Stayed all night. Yeah. Okay. Well, when next Wednesday, remember, <coughs> open uh, parent night. On next Wednesday and then lock in on Friday for the upper grades okay I have a story here uh, it, it, it's, it's called the um, walking the circle and we're going to uh, I'm going to have ask AJ to read it and then we'll talk about it good. yeah walking the circle yeah. sounds appropriate Kahomni, the circle, is a prominent in Lakota life and is used practically and symbolically because it is part of the re- reality of the physical environment. Toss a stone into a pond and waves flow out from the center in growing circles. Falling leaves in autumn often spin in circles before it lands. The sun and the moon are circular and from our perspective, they move in circles. The most powerful force on the plains, the tornado, moves in a circle. Life itself moves in cycles, or circles. Our annual calendar is a cycle of 13 months, or moons, because it is based on the cycles of the moon. There are the four seasons that obviously cycle continuously, and the life cycle for all beings is birth, childhood, adulthood, and old age. A sweat lodge is a simple circular structure that, according to the author, symbolizes Lakota spiritual beliefs and traditions as well as life itself. Perhaps the most practical application of the circle was in the design of dwellings. A circular floor plan goes back a long way, so far, in fact, that no one can remember when the design was first used. When our ancestors lived on the plains, they favored conical hide, covered dwellings. Both could withstand high winds and were relatively easy to erect and take down, and they were built from readily available materials. The conical dwellings, or teepee, which means they live there, was portable as well. Living in either type of dwelling was a constant reminder for the inhabitants that flowed in a circle and that they were unalterably connected to everything that was a part of it. So the design was based on a practical as well as spiritual needs. When our ancestors moved out onto the plains, their conical dwellings were arranged in a circular encampment. A typical encampment or village was small, usually 20 to 40 families in roughly roughly that many dwellings. When space and topography of a chosen site allowed, a small village would be arranged 
in a single circular row of dwellings. The larger villages would have double or triple rows of dwellings. Because each individual dwelling faced its door to the east, the entrance to the village was also to the east. East-facing teepee doors and village entrances were both practical and spiritual. Prevailing winds, especially in autumn and winter, came from the west and northwest, so the door needed to be on the sheltered or lee side of the dwelling. An eastward view was also a greeting to the new sun each day, thereby acknowledging the continuous cycle of life. One of the most popular designs seen on Lakota art or cultural artifacts is the medicine wheel. The Lakota word for it is kongleshka, spotted wood. This, liter this literal description is from the four colors painted on the wheel, or hoop, which is made of wood. The shape and the colors used represent the power of life, hence the translated term medicine wheel, having pehuta, or medicine, can mean possessing a certain power or ability. The medicine wheel is circular, with a balanced cross of two intersecting lines in its center. The ends of the lines connect with the wheels at four points. The circle represents life, and the two intersecting lines represent the two roads in life. The good road, usually painted in red, and the bad road, usually painted in black. The good road is also referred to as the red road. It is the most difficult to travel. The bad road, the black, is a wide, easy way to go. These are the two basic choices in life, and we choose one in every situation, the good or the bad. The four sacred colors of red, yellow, black, and white are included in the medicine wheel. The medicine wheel incorporates another important symbol in Lakota tradition and spirituality, the number four. Like the circle, the number four represents certain realities in life. There are the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. The four directions, east, south, west, and north, and the four basic elements of light, earth, wind, fire, and water. As a symbol or artifact, the medicine wheel can be found in two or three dimensional Lakota art and in many, and, it, and in the art of many other tribes as well. <clears throat> It is a sacred or holy symbol for traditional Lakota people. The way the cross is for Christians and the Star of David is for Jews. The greatest principle the circle symbolizes is the equality that applies to all forms of life. In other words, no one form of life is greater or lesser than any other form. We are different from one another, certainly, but different is not defined as greater than or less than. And we all share a common journey, the Maka Choni, or life on earth. In English, the circle of life. This is a much broader scope than the Judeo-Christian ideology that man has dominion over other forms of life. The concept that all life is equal doesn't necessarily circumvent the food chain viewpoint wherein living things are either prey or predator, those who are eaten and those who do the eating. The smaller, weaker, and slower are killed by the bigger, stronger, and faster. Undeniably, that is the way the natural world functions, the survival of the fittest and the strongest, some call it. But whatever we are, prey or predator, weak or strong, we are all part of a larger community, the largest of all, the circle of life. There is a reality that makes the mole equal to the bear, a reality that connects us all whether we walk, fly, crawl, swim, or grow roots. We are all born and we all die. This is such a simple and quiet reality that we humans allow our arrogance to obscure it and our ignorance to deny it. No matter who and what we are, we are born, more or less fulfill our purpose or destiny, and then we die. The most powerful creature on earth cannot cheat death. So in that sense, the biggest, the swiftest, and the most intelligent is no more powerful than the lowliest. In the end, the earth will reclaim us all. It's from the Lakota Way by Joseph M. Marshall III. Did you uh, read that, the Lakota Way? Uh, I have not 
read mm. the book yet. No, mm. uh, I have it in my cla- in my room, and I've yeah. started to read it, but I have not read it through yet. So that's a good. Uh, that's when it first came out. That's uh, very popular. Okay, and I think uh, I think the seventh graders. Uh, oh really? Okay. Did it? No, it's got the medicine I have wheel uh, on it. Uh, all his books. If, oh, really? if you're interested, like uh, they're uh, they're in my resource. Uh, okay. I have it locked up, and, but I have all his uh, all his books. Yeah, right now I'm also I'm reading uh, a book that someone gave me. Uh, Ron Jumping Eagle gave me that he read in his Lakota Lakota culture class at OLC, and it's called The Sioux uh, Traditions and Cultures. Yeah, and it's written about um, from from history of the mid 1800s mm-hmm. um, I guess yeah. it's considered the peak of the, the Sioux culture and so it just it describes all different historical traditions everything from hunting to to family to gender roles it's it's been really interesting so far mm-hmm. yeah that uh, I really like that uh, the Lakota way yeah, and then there, there's uh, another one called uh, I think he talked about the four, the fours, right? Like that they mentioned in there. And, and then last, like um, uh, in in uh, in Lakota, we have uh, like uh, in January, we had seasons, and uh, we, we we talked about seasons. And remember that time uh, they had a, uh, a question on. Uh, why do seasons change? And then uh, I think Chris explained it to the, uh, uh, I think it was the eighth graders. And then the reason, uh, oh, right, they're asking remember that one? Uh, yeah, uh, we're showing them the tilt yeah, of the yeah, earth yeah. and uh, just the science yeah. behind why the seasons change. Those are good uh, things to really uh, discuss. And that, like some of these, uh, I was surprised that one of those uh, students mentioned that too. It was uh, like uh, because of the 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 uh, what is it the Earth uh, yeah the tilt on the axis yeah yeah they're curious and you yeah. see they absorb yeah. a lot a lot yeah. more than we yeah. realize and that's what well, that's why the seasons what well, is it go further and then yeah closer um, it's always <coughs> tilted on the same axis and yeah. uh, when it's on one side of the sun the southern hemisphere is a little bit closer yeah. and the do the sun's rays are a little more direct, yeah. and when it's on the other side of the sun, the farther north, mm-hmm. the rays are more direct to the earth, therefore yeah. warming the earth. Yeah. And they they understood that, and then that's why, and that's and that also like uh, we I showed them the uh, uh, types of trees that mm-hmm. we have around here, and then uh, how how they grow, when they grow, why they grow. And that's and that has to do with the seasons too. Like the, a lot of these trees, like right now, uh, there's no leaves in them. Yeah. Pretty soon, uh, like another two or three months, you're going to start seeing the leaves again, and then it changes over again. So everything just changes like that. Every uh, there's four seasons. Isn't this the the moon of the popping tree? Yeah. Is that it? To this month, yeah, moon of the popping trees, and then uh, reason for that is because of cold. Cool weather freezes the trees and they start popping. Yeah, cracks like Yeah, right. yeah. And then next month, uh, or this month, fe- yeah, February. Okay, and then March will be like uh, pre- uh, March is you welcome back the thunder. Okay, okay. that's another one. So those so seasons change. So we're going to Honey Peak next month. Yeah. Um, hopefully, maybe middle, uh, maybe third week in March sometimes. So those are things that people, uh, they are called uh, uh, sacred sites. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in that story, but uh, that's all part of the, the spiritual, uh, because uh, most, all people are spiritual. Mm. And then for the Lakota people, in the spirituality, they have uh, sacred sites where they go to uh, do the offerings. Honey Peak, what are the sacred sites? 
Bear Butte, mm-hmm. uh, Devil's Tower, and then there's a place called Trishla, and that's uh, in the middle of the Black Hills. Okay. And that's, if you ever been to Hill City? It's uh, about yeah. 15, 20 miles from there to okay. the uh, northwest. Mm-hmm. So, we usually go to Honey Peak, uh, and then this year we, we talked about going to uh, Devil's Tower. Yeah, but that, that's uh, I think it's about uh, 190 miles or something. So we should uh, we leave at seven in the morning. We'll be there before um, lunch. Our bus driver's yeah. cruise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give Roberta in the driver's seat. Yeah, yeah. Well, she yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> okay. Uh, the the other one is. Uh, uh, in uh, like right now we have uh, just only like say uh, less than 90 days this is February February um, uh, last week in February so I figured March and April that's 60 days and then, and then you're going into May 16th of May is the last before you know it, it it's, it's, you're going to be right there and then you, you won't see those 8th graders no more See, that's another thing that uh, um, sometimes we, like, who follows these eighth graders? That question came up one time. Mm. And I'm sure somebody does. Whether it's at, uh, where, 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 I don't know. But there is a tracking system. Mm-hmm. So that, like, our eighth graders, when they leave, when they knee, maybe they'll go to Pine Ridge, maybe they'll go to Kyle. Some of them will go to Red Cloud, or some of them might go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. There's other schools, and then and then maybe a year from now they'll say, "Where's uh, so and so?" And then they'll say, "What? Well, yeah, he or she's at uh, sophomore now at Pine Ridge or yeah. like that." So yeah, they've been together since yeah. kindergarten. Yeah, so it's, yeah. A, it's a big step. Yeah, and proud of them. Yeah, and then it's really important. That that they they stay in this uh, road, mm-hmm. and we don't want them to leave that road and get left behind. Maybe we don't want them to be behind. They, they need to just keep going. Yeah, I like how in the story it described the the bad road as wide and easy yeah. to take. And yeah, it's true. It's it's easy to not care, not work hard. And yeah, the good road is that thin red road that you need to stay focused so you don't veer yeah. off. Yeah. Yep. It's um takes a lot of uh, everybody. Yeah. But it's it's always the, it's always up to you to we we always say that, you know uh Wakantranka that's the higher power. He gave you all that he gave you a little computer in your brain <laughs> and that's up to you to use that yep. to the max <laughs> to the maxima <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whatever you do, whatever you're good at, uh, like people, along this good road, you're going to learn. You, you cannot say, "Oh, no, I can't do this," or "I can't read," or "I can't add," or "I'm not interested in science." Or, but no, no, it's all. Uh, well, you see all these. Uh, resource stuff that you have at the school now. Mm-hmm. We have about three, what is it, three computer rooms? Yeah, there's two yeah. full labs, yeah. there's another yeah. one in the GT room. So everybody's using that now. That uh, It's good to see. Yeah. There's a lot of extra people there too. There's mm-hmm. a lot of support staff mm-hmm. uh, with gear up being there and HRY and there's just other people. Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice. And today some, uh, some places uh, like uh, we are not doing that, uh, but even in the Lakota language, they they use iPads and they put uh, words in there so that mm. I know. Uh, I think um, I remember uh, Kyle. I have, uh, we have friends Kyle. And they mentioned that they use iPads, huh. and uh, you put a sentence in there, and everybody sees it. Right. It makes it interesting. Yeah. Because you're using that iPad. Technology. Yeah, everywhere. technology. That's technology. 
So just just keep going, uh, keep learning, and uh, you always have uh, like uh, what, another that th- this uh, like February, March, like th- these things are what we well the, the curriculum we call it Chanku. Mm-hmm. That's the road. Uh, our, uh, we for us we call it Wongspit Chanku. That means in, um, if you want to translate that, it will be Wongspit Chanku is education and road. Nakota, we call it the curriculum. We call it Wongspit Chanku. So you have that road, and, but you use that, and then you can always get other stuff to add to it. Yeah, you can add to it, or else look at other curriculum, see what they're doing. But right now, everybody's using this. Well, you can always add to it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're not really... Uh, nobody tells you to stay right there on that road. You can always look around and add it. You know, like something. You can, people do it in their own way, different ways. Yeah, it's Adjust different ways it. Yeah, it yeah. So, that's... Yeah, so, so that's um, uh, the story. And then what else do? Uh, did I forget anything? Yeah, a total Lloyd will be signed off at six o'clock. <laughs> Is there anything we should add before we uh, take off? Um, we covered much. Uh, the walk in the circle story is nice. Family wellness night next Wednesday night down in Wounded Knee. I think so. Anything to add, Brian? Nothing. So we'll just, uh, I want to say thanks to Lloyd, and uh, uh, he's always up here. And uh, uh, also thanks to you and uh, for coming up and sharing, and uh, maybe next week again. Yeah. Uh, I got another story that I uh, have here, and it's on spirituality, so we'll, we'll talk about that next time. So I want, I want to thank everybody for listening. If you're on the road, be careful. And uh, doksha ake. All right. Thank you again. I would like to thank Lloyd too and Brian for yeah. coming on up. Doksha ake.